Coach Bob DeBest in his fifth year as offensive coordinator at the University of New Mexico. The Lobos finished the 2016 season as the nation's leading rushing offense. DeBest's 2016 team also eclipsed the school's single season rushing record with 4,550 yards and boasted two 1,000 yard rushers. The season concluded in the victory in the New Mexico Bowl. He's also coached at Texas State, Texas A&M, and Sam Houston State. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Coach Bob DeBess. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. I think that works. Sounds like it works. Thank you all for being here. This is, uh, you guys are truly the, the hardcore guys. This is the last session uh, of the convention, and it's the triple option guys, okay? So what the hell are you guys thinking running the ball, right? Okay, that's, not, that's an unpopular thing to do today. But no, seriously, I, I, I really do appreciate you uh, being here for the last session. And um, I've been 35 years um, as a part of this uh, AFCA. And um, it's the first time I've had an opportunity to address anybody at the convention. So for me, it's a huge thrill. Um, so I want to thank the AFCA. I want to thank um, Coach Davey, our head football coach, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Bob Davey, but probably most of you are familiar with him from ESPN, his ESPN days. But he's been fantastic to us and very trusting. He wanted to run the triple option when he came into New Mexico. And so it's been a, it's been a good marriage and uh, it's been a great experience for me. So um, it's a thrill for me to be here. It's also a thrill for me to be here because my son Cameron uh, is in the audience. So not very often that you get a chance to talk as a dad and, and have a son uh, that follows you in the profession. So that's kind of fun for me too. As most of the speakers have said that have 50 minutes, this is gonna fly by pretty quick. So this is my goal. I'm gonna get through as much as I can and I may move um, a little bit fast and I wanna move uh, fast so I get as much in as possible, okay? Most of what we do will be off of the video, um, but I do wanna share with you a few things as far as principles are concerned. I'm gonna talk about our motion rules and uh, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of the mesh and then we'll get into schemes, but we'll, we'll get into the schemes as we watch the video. Please, at any point during the session, this is a good atmosphere to just stop, raise your hand, and ask questions, because oftentimes when you have a question, somebody else in the audience has a question as well. We have no secrets, okay? This offense kind of just evolved, okay? It just kind of just evolved. When I got to Sam Houston State, worked for a guy named Willie Fritz, um, it was something that we uh, kind of did out of necessity, and um, it's become a lot of fun. We're triple option, but we run triple option out of the gun and out of the pistol. And our triple option is based on um, the zone read schemes, okay? So it's a little bit different than the underneath center stuff. Those guys do an unbelievable job, and that's where it all started. And a lot of the principles that we have come from them, okay? But... Initially, what I want to start with is just some offensive principles. And again, I'm going to kind of move through these pretty quick, but I've kind of highlighted some things that I think are the most important. We're going to attempt to be as difficult as possible to defend, yet stay with an assist that allows our players to execute with confidence in its continuity. And continuity is probably the most important word uh, as far as that principle is concerned. We're going to be multiple in our formations and motions. Okay, We will try as personnel will allow to have as many personnel packages as is workable. So again, our goal is to make it as easy for us as possible, yet make it as hard for the defense to prepare for. We're gonna to try to do the same things over and over and over again out of a lot of different personnel packages, a lot of different looks, formationally and emotionally. Not a revolutionary concept, okay, but it's something that's important for us as far as our offense is concerned. We're gonna identify our playmakers. I have what's called a touches list that we go through before every game, and I have that in the press box, and we're gonna to try to make sure that we go through that touches list and make sure that our playmakers um, touch the ball as many ways, as many times as they possibly can. But you don't wanna come out of a game saying, Jesus, why do we only give the ball to this guy five times? Although we wanna be explosive in big plays to be characteristic to our attack, our priorities will lie in making first downs, okay? I work for a defensive guy, but I am in 100% total agreement. We are a huddle up, football team. We don't speed things up. We do have a tempo type of an offense, but we're old school uh, as far as huddling up and what have you. And I'm not going to go into the stats, but check the stats this year. And I think the same thing was true last year. The top 15 fastest teams as far as offense, most plays run, check their winning percentage against the slowest 15. 
who will always go into each ball game with a sound blitz pickup and blitz beater attack. But we're going to spend a lot more time on blitz during practice than what we ever see it during a game. We have to see it. We have to prepare for it for passing situations and even run situations. But we don't see a lot of blitz. And obviously the reason we don't see a lot of blitz is it's hard to set all your blitzes to dive, quarterback, pitch. So people come in with extensive uh, pressure packages, and because of what we do, we don't see it a lot, and that becomes a huge advantage on, say, third downs. We will spend as much time as necessary to thoroughly go through our self-scout. This is maybe the most important thing that we do because the challenge for us is often how can we present this thing different. What we do is all about window dressing. It's all about window dressing. It's all about eyes pre-snap. It's all about getting just a few steps out of position post-snap um, because of what we've done pre-snap. So how can we do the same things over and over and over again but present it in a different manner. So self-scout for us is something that we spend a lot of time on on Sundays before we even start talking about our opponent. As we go about varying our attack from week to week, we'll always do our best to maintain the continuity and integrity of the system. Working from the inside out to try to make a new wrinkle fit is much more sound than working from the outside in. We, don't, we try not to grab bag. It's real easy to watch what somebody else is doing and say, geez, can we fit that to what we're doing? I'm not saying we never do that, but for the most part, we try to operate by the principle that here's our system, let's try to work from the inside out to create flexibility and new wrinkles, okay? Nothing can take the place of repetition. I think triple option football um, is the epitome of um, the need for repetition in practice because, you know, I'm constantly, constantly yelling the word precise, 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 precision, precision in practice. We're constantly using that word because we have to be precise. We have to be able to execute what we do better than they defend us. And then most of the time, they've only got two and a half, three days to try to, you know, come up with a plan and make it work. The last thing that I've gotten read there is something as a coordinator that, um, I stick to and I challenge our guys all the time. If we're going to have a new idea or we're going to suggest a new idea, something's got to go. Okay, something's got to go. There is no addition without subtraction. There is no addition without subtraction. If we're going to add a play, if we're going to add a new concept, a pass, doesn't matter what it is, something's got to go. So that guy that comes up with that idea, he's got to come up with what goes. Because there's a finite, there's a finite number of, 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 of hours, you know, in the week. And those players don't live it like we do, right? I mean, they, don't, they don't live it like we do. Um, and so we try to operate by that, by that principle, okay? Just some quick thoughts on motion, because I get asked about this quite a bit. You know, we, we make, when I say three back, our third back most of the time is an off-the-ball tight end, okay? It could be two backs in the backfield and we bring a slot back in. But when I say when we make three back, I'm talking about the tight end also, because he's off the ball. Regardless of the motion call, all motions should be executed at full speed. All triple-related motions should look as much like across the formation motion as possible. So what that means is, and I'll show you on video, if we start climbing too early to the backfield, then we're giving them just that much more time to react. So we want to try as best we can uh, to get as close to that tackle, to the end of the, line, uh, end of the line of scrimmage as we possibly can. Stay as flat as you can for as long as you can before climbing to the backfield, okay? Regardless of how you've gotten into pitch phase, your eyes should never leave the quarterback. You must be ready for a quick pitch. If the quarterback gets to the perimeter with the ball, you must always maintain your proper, what we call one by five. We talk about one by five pitch relationship and never, ever, ever come inside the pitch key. Never come inside the pitch key. Always try to stretch the field. Always try to stretch that pitch key, that number two defender. We've got an orbit motion, which means that uh, whoever is tagged to come in orbit motion We'll again fat, be fast, be flat for as long as possible before you start to climb. We tell him his aiming point is the heels of the dieback, whether that dieback is in pistol or in gun. We will tell him to trust the quarterback to time up the snap to allow you to get into a proper pitch relationship while maintaining your speed. So we don't want that pitch back thinking and wondering and not trusting that quarterback and slowing down. Um, that's up to the quarterback to time that up, and I'll go through that in the video as well. Um, we didn't always have star, but we tie the word star with orbit to mean you're going to get back there now to the backfield, you're going to get set. You're going to become basically an eye tailback or a pistol back, okay? And then you're going to continue across the ball, okay? So orbit and star tied together. 
that would be orbit staying in motion, so that would just be H orbit for us, tagging to whatever receiver we want, and then H star, he would just go ahead and get set behind, you know, into a pistol position, whether that dive back being gun or pistol, and then that gives us a two-way go now, okay? Spin would be just the opposite, just the opposite of orbit, same thing, same, same aiming point as far as the heels of the dive back, stick that foot in the ground and come back to where you came from, okay? Excuse me, I'm sorry. And then the, 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 the tag with that, if we wanted to be stationary, would be twist. So we got orbit, star, spin, and twist as far as the tags are concerned. Okay? All right. Let's get to the video here. Any questions so far? Quarterback starts the motion. Good question. It's the, it's the quarterback's job to start the motion, and he just gives them a nod or a heel or a wave or whatever. And, and then it's his job to time it up. Uh, uh, as far as the snap is concerned, okay? So as we go through this thing, our triple option um, is 30-31, is 30-31-F. F would mean that the uh, gun back, if we have two backs in the back, if we have a gun and a pistol back, the gun back would be the dive back. Otherwise, it's assumed, it's assumed if we have a pistol back that the pistol back is the dive back, if that makes sense, okay? Um, triple option, 30 and 31, predetermined give inside zone 20 and 21. So our 30 series is our triple series. Our predetermined series, as far as the triple uh, uh, is concerned, or the triple marriage is concerned, is 20 and 21, okay? All right, got this from Navy, and this thing is really, you know, and again, this is, we were way behind, um, but this thing has really cleared things up. Just, the, just the, the numbering system, okay? Just making sure that we number who the, who the read key is, who the pitch key is, and then who we want to arc to as far as the deepest defender. So we'll always have a one, two, or three, regardless of the structure of the defense, and really regardless of the, of the play, whether it's a double option or a triple option play, we'll always have a, a count, okay? And for us, the one doesn't, it's not always this way. We've got some ways to change it up, but as a general rule, a one is a four eye on out, two is the next defender outside or stack uh, over that read key, and then three would be the force defender, the deepest force defender to that side. So we'll have this made up for our kids each and every week. Everybody will know, including these guys out here, what the count is, okay? And they've got to be able to recognize the count. So um, just as an example, um, this, is our, this is 11 personnel for us, okay? Not very good motion. I'm gonna show you some clips. I'm gonna show you some clips here and you're gonna see some good things and you're gonna see some bad things and I'll tell you where we're making mistakes and where we're pretty good. But for us, this would be 11 personnel. We call this scatter. This would be uh, scatter left, H spin, 30. Scatter left, H spin, 30. So from a count standpoint, it's one, it's two. These guys are trying to get to an eight man front with, the, with the, what they think is going to be orbit motion you can see this guy getting down to a fourth position. He's trying to get to the middle third, okay? So again, the thing that's a little bit different for us is, you know, it's off of the zone read. Our cruiser, who is our off the ball tight end, he is responsible for making the call as to where the pitch key or number two is. So he will yell on every stinking play, pass plays, everything. He will yell on everything, two inside or two outside, two inside or two outside. And that'll get that guy, the center, clued into who he needs to identify as the Mike backer. He should already be clued into where number two is the quarterback. But really, these three guys, quarterback, H, and center, need to be on the same page as far as who the option key is. And the reason that is, is our cruiser now is responsible for cleaning up the box, okay, cleaning up the box. So in this particular case, two would be outside. So he knows now I'm cruising the box. I'm cruising the box, okay, and if this box backer wants to scrape, I've got to pick him up so we can get to the perimeter option number two. If he's a box backer and hang around inside, I can work to the third level defender. What this allows us to do is push everything, push everything a man further. So oftentimes, we will get a lineman off to this force defender out here who's the foal player in case we give the ball on the triple, okay? All right, so you can see the cruiser working up to the box. Backer is a box backer, so he works up to the safety. 
Good job with the quarterback attacking the perimeter. I'm going to get into attacking the perimeter, and I'll get into the mesh um, principles, uh, mesh coaching points, I guess, in a second. Okay? So this would be 11 personnel. This would be H spin for us. This would be 30. Inside zone blocking scheme, inside zone blocking principles for um, the line. And that's the beauty of, I think, one of the beauty of what we do is um, – the offensive line spends 75, you know, 70 percent of their time just working inside zone, double combos, working up to the second level. Okay, just a different way to present it. Two tight ends now, kind of a condensed formation, quick motion now with Z. We call this cheat motion. Okay, here it is out of the gun. It would be the same call 30. Okay, same call 30. Two outside, two outside. So now that cruiser is going to block the box backer there, and you can see. The read side tackle, working to what we would call the mic, okay? And the combo between the guard center would work to the furthest or uh, play side, call side backer. And that's the, that's the thing that gets a little bit confusing as you watch this. We call this 30, but obviously all the actions, you know, coming to the, coming to the left. So the zone scheme, the call talks to the offensive line as far as the scheme is concerned, okay? We pick up an extra blocker with the cruiser. Here it is against odd, okay? So this would be the same, this would be the same structure that you saw to begin with. 11 personnel, we call this scatter, okay? We do not designate the back if he's in pistol. Let's assume he's in pistol if we don't give a backfield call. This would be twist motion that we talked about. Now he's set, so now we got a two-way go, go either way. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the end zone here they stem from an even to an odd. So now the count goes one, two, three. Okay. You can see one, two, three. And then we account for this inside backer right here with this tackle being able to get an outside release, which frees our tight end or our cruiser. To become, sorry, to become involved in the perimeter, okay? So let me show you wide. We go ahead and read a 4i out of the pistol or out of the gun. Um, time and distance allows you to do that a little bit easier uh, than maybe underneath center where he could blow up the mesh a little bit, okay? We got fast guys, okay? I'm going to tell you that right now. We got fast guys, and that certainly helps as far as <laughs> explosiveness and not having to call as many plays when you got fast guys, okay? But you can see the tackle now working up to the backer to seal him, which really allows you to get an extra blocker out here on the perimeter to account for it. We'll have some change-ups on the perimeter as far as crack and arc and things like that. This, again, guys, stop me if you have questions, okay? All right, this concept, I think, I, I put this in here as a, as a, a special teaching um, part of the, 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 uh, the presentation because I think this is absolutely crucial in this offense, particularly if you're going to look at it out of gun or out of pistol as opposed to underneath center. Attacking, to, attacking the perimeter, the quarterback getting out and gaining yards, getting east and west, but at the same time getting north and south and attacking the perimeter and stretching the defense to me is one of the most important coaching points there is, okay? And the reason I say that is if he's out here attacking the perimeter, okay, then he's running away from all this inside pursuit, and he truly is giving us an opportunity to get to all three phases, okay? We've made the decision to pull the ball because number one closed, and actually the call here would be two outside, two outside, okay? So now our cruiser would cruise the box. We knew against this team, against this double eagle, I'd like to work this exchange, so he had to check this, this uh inside backer right here for the twist. And you can see that he does, but he moves on because he sees him as a box backer and a guy that's squeezing for dive. So we're able to get him all the way to the free. Now, this guy right here really reads the dive key just like the quarterback does. So if he sees that dive key, if he sees number one squeezing like hell, he knows that ball's going outside. Okay, he knows that ball's going outside. And so he can go ahead and I, I think after the quarterback, I think this dude right here may be the most important guy in the offense, okay? Because he's got to have the ability to adjust in space, 
and he's got to be physical. But it's a great job of attacking the perimeter. And here's a pretty good picture of the one by five pitch relationship that we talk about. Great job of this guy not giving up and thinking, okay, the quarterback's going to keep it. Because really, what's the reality is that guy's wrong. He's a pitch player, but he says, okay, I've taken care of my responsibility. And this is where the big plays come. You guys that run triple option, you guys that defend triple option, you know the big plays come when the defense screws up. I mean, that's the way it is. But that's the beauty of the triple option is if we can be more precise and more disciplined in executing what we do than they are in defending what we do, then you got a chance to be explosive as can be. And I'm telling you now, you know, things have come a long way at New Mexico. I mean, we're, it's, been a, it's been a heck of a ride. Um, if we weren't running triple option in New Mexico, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at. I mean, we, we have to do something different. We have to do something different. We have to make people stop on Sunday and say, holy crap, we gotta, we got to relook at everything that we're doing. Okay? Then you get all these spread teams you got all these spread teams. Everybody looks the same week after week after week. And then you're going to tell those scout team guys that have been running no back formations, okay, now we're going to put three backs back there. And quarterback who's 6'5 and chunks the ball, you're going to ride and read all week long, scout team quarterback. You know, so it's, it's all about, you know, it's all about us being more precise. Now, this is one of my favorite plays of all time. This is when we were at Sam Houston in 2011. Um, we talk about attacking the perimeter. We we're constantly on this quarterback right here, even if – even if the cruiser kicks the straight backer and you've got to jump up inside, keep attacking the perimeter, keep attacking the perimeter, keep getting out there because they're going to be wrong, okay? You're going to make them wrong. You're going to make them wrong, okay? Coaching point here, and as you go through and watch this thing, watch our pistol back right here. See how he fades away? See how he fades away from the dive key? That's a key coaching point right there, too. The, di the, the, uh, the dive player can never, ever, ever drift or fade into the dive key, okay? All that's going to do is going to muddy the picture. Oftentimes, you can get a good read. You're not sure what that guy's doing. You can extend the ride, <clears throat> and if that dive back will fade away to the play side, oftentimes that dive key will go ahead and take the bait, and you'll, you'll get that big play that you want. But that's a great, great, great example of the quarterback continuing to attack the perimeter and generating a big play right there. Okay, last one here, I think, on attack the perimeter. And this is, this is a good job attacking the perimeter, but he doesn't, he should pitch the ball. He should pitch the ball. We teach, it, we teach these guys to attack the inside shoulder, attack the inside shoulder, attack the inside hip, but do it with speed. I'd love to have seen him pitch that ball right there, but again, he's the decision maker out there, and ball security is a premium, okay? All right, again. We said, we said this would be one of the things that we talk about, okay, and I'll stop and talk about this. This is our gun mesh mechanics. Now, we've changed this a little bit. Our open date last week, we had four weeks to go. Um, we were having a little bit of a trouble, a little bit of trouble getting the ball front side, getting the ball play side on the give, and so we changed our mesh point a little bit, made it a little bit faster. I'm not as crazy about it. We're going to kind of mess with that and probably – find some compromise, some common ground between where we were and where we are right now, okay? Because we're not riding and reading the way we need to. But anyway, we talked about from the gun mesh, step to the back, step to the back, seed the ball deep, get the ball as deep as possible, get the ball as deep as possible to that dive back, whether it be pistol or gun. Back has to have a soft squeeze on the ball. You guys have heard that term before. Tell the quarterback to get the ball on the running back's far hip. Get it on his far hip. That way he'll get it on his belt buckle. If you tell him to get it on his belt buckle or belly button, it's going to be on his inside hip, and you're going to have balls on the ground because he's not going to be able to get that soft squeeze. Transfer your weight as a quarterback. Transfer your weight to the front foot through the mesh. And that's the difference between the guys that can and the guys that can't. You know, can they seed the ball deep, right? And as they're riding, can they shift their weight to that front foot, okay? Can they shift that weight? And the flexion should come in the front knee, Okay, and that also becomes his power foot when he comes off the mesh. Okay, and we talk about extending the ride, extending the ride, and the extension comes through shifting your weight. Okay, so here's our backfield. So I'm going to have three different um, practice drills that we do that are must for us. This is backfield. We just call this backfield. This is just the back. And sometimes we bring the tight ends in there just for timing and if there's different looks as, as far as his crew's responsibilities. But the back basically is split, or excuse me, is on the inside leg of the play side or the uh, backside guard or the read side guard, okay? 
We talk about open crossover downhill, just like any other inside zone. It's open, it's downhill. The crossover downhill become the same step, okay? Big elbow, okay? Big pocket as far as the inside elbow is concerned. <clears throat> One of the keys to slowing things down and allow the quarterback to really extend the ride, if you can, try not to let this guy start until he catches the ball. Try not to let him start until he catches the ball. And that gives the quarterback a much better opportunity to make an educated read, okay? But you can see him shift his weight to the front foot. Pretty good job, okay? <clears throat> this is a this is a eight-man front edge pressure, okay? So identify this dude in here. This dude right here is one. Him is two. Anticipating, anticipating the quick pitch. Anticipating the quick pulling pitch. Not predetermined, but anticipating. Okay, pressure situation, man on man outside, arc to three, because we certainly don't want to block two, we'd like to option him, okay. We want the same thing, it's more difficult, because he can't see it, but he has to try to feel it, but it's much more difficult out of the pistol for him to know exactly when he's caught the ball. It's kind of more of a timing thing. That's a good question. It's much easier to do that out of gun than it is out of the pistol. Pistol mechanics, we talk about stepping away, stepping away, stepping away. And again, I'm going to show you some clips from this year where you're going to say, wait a minute, you're not doing that. Yeah, we're not as much, and we're going to change it a little bit. Step away, clear the midline, okay? The midline is that line that leads right up that center's but, okay, give the running back access to both A-gaps, both play side and back side A-gap. Again, seed the ball as deep as possible. Again, the back has to have a soft squeeze. Get the ball to the running back's far hip, transfer your weight through to the front foot through the mesh and extend the ride. So if you go three through six, they're the exact same concepts and rules as far as the mechanics from the gun, okay? It is a little bit different out of the pistol. I like it. I love it out of the pistol. And initially, this is how we... When we, when we first put this in at Sam Houston and brought it to New Mexico, we run a lot more pistol than we were gun. Now it's about 50-50, maybe even a little bit more gun, okay? I love the way this quarterback would, would hop. He would hop, and as he hopped, he'd get a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage, okay, which allowed him to extend the ride a little bit more because he could see that ball a little bit deeper, okay? And he was really good at shifting it. See how he's shifting his weight over that front foot right there? Okay, that's a pretty good picture of what it should look like. Okay, and he's doing a good job of clearing the midline for that back too. That back's got access, if he gives the ball, he's got access to the play side A gap as well. This guy's not quite as good, but not bad. I mean, not bad, not bad. But you can see the ride's not nearly as long. And the reason the ride's not nearly as long is because he's not seeding the ball as deep as that first guy did. He's not seeding the ball as deep as the first guy did, okay? Still a pretty good job of, of shifting his weight, though, over that front foot, front knee. Okay, last shot here. Out of three back. What's wrong here? I'm going to move ahead. Uh-oh, we got some, got some video issues here. Okay, I don't know why it's so slow. All right, here we go. All right, so again, just some examples out of the pistol here, okay? And I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead. Okay, we, let's get some drills here, okay? All right, half line is a, is a must. We'll do half line two times a week for sure, two times a week for sure. And this is a great opportunity. You know, it's just center, read side guard and tackle, however many backs you need. Tight ends if you need them. This happens to be 20 personnel for us. So we're working our back as our cruiser. We're working our H back as our pitch back. And so however, you know, whoever you need within the personnel grouping to run the play, but it truly is just half line. It's a great opportunity to mix things up as far as the perimeter is concerned. It's a great opportunity, obviously, to work mesh mechanics with, every, with more people in there. Um, it's a great opportunity to work pitch relationships with more people in there. Um, Again, it's a staple. Um, we really only do this for about five minutes, but we'll get in 10 plays in five minutes because we don't huddle up. I just holler out personnel grouping, formation, motion, and we work as fast as we possibly can. Um, guys running the scout team out there getting those guys set up. 
to make sure that we can get maximum reps. Here's a little bit different scheme. We call this crush, okay? Now we've got our tight end as our cruiser. We still have our back coming, excuse me, we still have a receiver coming around as a pitch back. So again, nothing magical as far as the scheme is concerned, just different ways. It gives you an opportunity, a five minute opportunity, 10 minutes if you want to, opportunity to run, to continue to run triple and work on the precision and, and see the different looks that you might see during the week. And what we have to do, we're really not sure from week to week what we're gonna see. We can guess, but people surprise us. So what we have to do is we have to work eight-man front, um, four, three, too high, odd, too high. We gotta work all of it, double eagle. We gotta work all of it every, every, every week, okay, just in preparation. Okay, now, this is what we call perimeter drill. So perimeter drill, you take the lineman out. We've got all the skill kids in there. Again, a good opportunity, your, your best opportunity to really teach as far as perimeter looks are concerned. Um, Change-ups on the perimeter that you want to do. Another opportunity to work meshes and to work pitches, although most of the time we're going to give this guy a give read, the ball's going to come out. I, want to, I put this clip on here to, to make this point. Never, ever, 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 ever come inside the pitch key. That's a lousy, terrible job. Very undisciplined by this kid right here, number one, as far as effort and practice. Number two, not being aware that that trap corner is the pitch key. Okay, it would be one, the way this works, it would be two. He's got to come outside, come outside, come outside to force this guy to make a decision. So never, ever, ever, ever come inside your pitch key as far as the pitch back is concerned, okay? Just one more example, now we're working crack, okay? <clears throat> and here's a good picture of the quarterback going out there and actually attacking the perimeter, okay? So backfield, five minutes. Half line, five minutes. Perimeter, five minutes. That gives you an extra 15 minutes, maybe a day, okay, before you get into um, the team part of it, okay? And we'll always have a team option, period, obviously. We'll always have backfield, half line, perimeter, team option, play action pass. Play action pass, okay? Those are staples of our practice. Get into, we get into quite a bit of three back. The reason we get into three, or, and I say three back, three back set, either that diamond look, or what we call this pack deal, because it disguises the cruiser, okay? If you think about just a two-by-two two set with two backs in the backfield and the off-the-ball tight end, well, okay, there's that cruiser right there, okay? And so these, this, this uh, formation right here, it kind of disguises the cruiser a little bit, okay? From a count st standpoint, it's one, it's two, because this is an odd look and it's a four-eye, we can outside release that tackle to get to the Read side inside backer, okay? So one, two, three, okay? Cruiser then, because he knows the tackle's gonna try to work to that inside backer, he'll still check the inside backer, but he knows he can go to three. And we don't block the backside uh, safety here, but I'm gonna show you from the end zone how he watches, watch his eyes here, okay? Little bit of hesitation, little bit of hesitation right there as far as if the dive back has it or not and allows us to run by him. Now, not crazy about what this guy's doing. This is what I was talking about. Don't fade into the dive key. Don't fade into the dive key. Keep, keep pushing it front side. Keep pushing it play side, which would be to the right here because it's 30. Keep pushing it play side to get that guy out of there so he doesn't muddy the waters. Again, there's shots of defenses that you might recognize. For every time that we had a big play, they stoned us three times, so you know, that doesn't matter. I mean, everybody's... Okay, pressure to the top, which often means you're going to get movement, line movement, away from the pressure. So we happen to be running the triple away from pressure here, okay? Watch what our cruiser does here. Watch our cruiser here, okay? Okay, he's got two outside, two outside. So that means he's inside. That means he's inside, okay? So it'd be one, two... He's got to ensure that the box is clean. Well, why go around the dive key when he's already out the, I mean, up the field and outside? So he inserts, and really we kind of gain another blocker right there because they can kind of mess with you a little bit if he's a quarterback player and that inside backer stays inside and you're trying to get that cruiser outside of the read key. He doesn't always come outside the read key. Remember I said earlier, the quarterback and the cruiser, they've got to see things the same. That makes sense to everybody? They gotta see things the same, okay? So that cruiser right here, 
sees that that five technique is giving the quarterback a give read. So go ahead and insert inside the dive key and help out in the box, knowing that the ball is going to be given. Okay, edge pressure, tougher for the cruiser here. We just saw a shot earlier where we had edge pressure, potential quick pull and pitch with the cruiser on the read side. Okay, cruiser's on the opposite side, which you got to do. You got to bring the cruiser from the call side to the read side post snap some. You have to do that just to change things up, okay? Especially if they're mirroring the cruiser with the safety and, they, and you get him chasing. But this is still an arc situation for that cruiser, and you can see it's a little bit tougher to get out there. That guy's got more time to get down the field, but still he does a good job of getting there. Quarterback does a good job of disengaging and pitching the football. I think probably from a, there's no question that from a backfield standpoint, there's less pressure on the quarterback meshing from the gun than there is from the pistol. This is the hardest backfield set to react to a quick pull and pitch. When you've got a pistol mesh and a gun back, who's your pitch back coming from the opposite side. That's difficult on the quarterback, okay? So we'll game plan based on pressure tendencies as to what kind of backfield set um, we want to be in to run the triple. Guys, stop me if you got questions, okay? Please stop me if you got questions. All right, here's, a, here's an example of uh, the give, okay? So here's an example of the give off the triple right here. Um, you can see the cruiser has given a two outside call. So he's working inside to this backer right here, which allows this tackle to work to the guy we identify as the mic, which allows this combo right here to work to the fold player, okay? And that's the thing that sets us apart a little bit than some zone read teams. Most zone read teams will put this tackle on the read side inside backer. Our cruiser will take care of him, which allows everything to be pushed one backer over, okay? Now this happens to be a two tight end set. This is a unbalanced two tight end set, so they got a little bit of extra gap to worry about. This is a, a decent shot. Now this is this year's mesh, so you can see things are a little bit faster. Now, not a bad job by three, not a bad job by three of wait until the ball is caught, okay, which allows the quarterback a little bit more time, but I don't like what the quarterback's doing right here because he's not, he's really not extending the ride, he's really not shifting his weight. So we're going we're gonna to change things a little bit to allow us to do that, but I think right here you, gotta, you can see a pretty good picture of where the combos work to where the combos work to and how that cruiser allows you to gain uh, a blocker, okay? It's just, it's just the old wishbone load scheme is all it is. Okay, again, stop me. Stop me, just yell, stop me if you have questions. I don't, we don't have any secrets, so stop me if you have questions. Okay, so again, here's that triple stack look that we talk about. One, two, so that means the cruiser's gonna clean the box up. Okay, cruiser's gonna clean the box up. <clears throat> Read side tackle is going to work to the mic. Big time, big time fade by that fold player up top, so we're having a hard time getting the guard or center off to that fold player. Okay, but we get a pull read. Pretty good job of the, well, really a good job of the quarterback attacking the perimeter, and a good job of this guy maintaining his pitch relationship. Now, you'd like to see him still go, 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 don't give up. Don't give up, don't give up. And that's one of the hardest things for those pitchbacks. Don't give up, because that's where the big plays happen downfield. This was to kind of seal the deal here in this particular game. We encourage cutting. We, we don't cut as good as the academies. Um, but we do encourage cutting um, if we can. Um, if we have to stay up, obviously leverage becomes really, really, really important, okay? All right, here we are again from 11 personnel. Now you're going to see it run the other way. This will be 31, okay? So this is from 11 personnel. This is our H back coming around on orbit motion. So let's talk about orbit motion, okay? So it's up to the quarterback to send him, time up his snap when he calls for the ball, and this is a pretty good picture. I mean, we talk about him being about a yard from the end man on line of scrimmage before he starts his climb. He doesn't want to start his climb really until the ball is snapped. And so this is a pretty good, it's pretty good timing right there. Really pretty good timing right there, okay? One, two is actually here. Two is actually here. So you can see our cruiser 
cruising the box, ensuring that we can get the ball outside when we get squeezed and scraped so we can get to number two. Number two goes to pitch, and the quarterback keeps it, okay? No, 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 this, this would be two. Because he's the pitch key. I don't know who's asking the question. Because he's the pitch key, okay? And now you can, don't get me wrong, in this particular look right here, if you want to make him two, if you want to make him two and pitch off of him and arc to him, that's totally sound. I mean, you can do that. But what we found is you make him two, that gives this guy a free run to kind of uh, make the pitch a little bit muddy. So we kind of handle the first threat with the crews, and we try to make the perimeter as clean as we possibly can, and that's why we identified that way. Does that make sense? Uh, it, really, really, it comes down to more the structure. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a general sense, yes. Um, it really comes down to more of the structure. It comes down to numbers is what it comes down to. It really comes down to numbers. This look right here and this look right here, we don't treat any different. In other words, if we were coming down here, this would be one, this would be two, we'd cruise the box. We're coming down here, this would be one. Instead of him being here, he just happens to be here, we'd still call him two. Does that make sense? And again, you know, part of the reason, and this is just, this is just base option football, but we got numbers up there. Okay, we got numbers up there. Now, as we motion, as we motion here, okay, they're trying to, right? They're trying, they're trying to. They should probably get him down a little bit faster and get that other guy to the middle field a little bit. But we still have numbers over there. You know, we used to, we used to spend a lot of time talking about shades and things like that. We see so much double shade or post snap movement that it's really about, it's really about numbers and it's about. Uh, it's about grass. This is an unbalanced look right here. So this is just a way to, we're just kind of messing around here. So this is 11 personnel. We got an unbalanced tray formation right here. Um, we shift the tight end. We orbit the, the, uh, the H. Okay, so again, window dressing, window dressing, window dressing, just different ways to present. But we're running the exact same thing as far as this edge and open, you know, open the side as far as the read is concerned. It's the same look that we see all the time. Okay, here's one, here's two. Quick pitch situation right here, and um, he's looking for three. You know, he's looking for three right here, and there he is. Okay, so good job of the good job of the H here reacting to um, the pitch. And this is what I talked about when I said on the orbit motion or the spin motion: don't ever take your eyes off the quarterback. Don't ever take your eyes off the quarterback. We try to get these pitchbacks educated and be able to see pre-snap if there is a potential for quick pull and pitch so they can be more in tune to look that ball in knowing that it's going to be quick. Um, but if they never take their eyes off the quarterback, then they got a chance to react to this ball right here, which is not, it's not a great pitch by any stretch. 4-2, okay, eight-man front, okay, 1-2, okay, cruise the box, you get a box backer, you can work to number three, which would be the free safety right here. But we get squeeze and scrape. So the cruiser has to now block the scrape backer or else we got two outside. And really with that funnel and free, we really got three outside. So if you look at this picture right here, before too long, we've got to find some way to handle this guy right here. And that's where the change ups with the wide receivers come in as far as the perimeter blocking is concerned. But this is a pretty good picture of assignments. You can see the read side tackle working to the mic. You can see the play side combo working to the fold player right there. So if we were to give the ball, really we got a hat for a hat for everybody there, okay? So between reading and identifying, okay, you should be able to, you know, account for Everybody except for the free. I'm, backfield depth. Yeah. Now this again, we're going we're going to change this. But if we're in the now, when we're in the pack, 
When we're in the pistol, this guy's going to be about a yard, yard and a half, depending on the speed behind the quarterback. It used to be three. It used to be three. We're going, to, we're going to get a little bit closer to that from here on out, okay, because we're not getting right. Right now, it's a yard, yard and a half, depending on his speed. This always looks a little bit tight, but the bottom line is he's about a yard, yard and a half behind the quarterback's heels in the pistol. He's a yard behind this guy in a normal eye set. Gun, his toes are at five. His, he's about a yard. He's a yard behind the quarterback. Again, yard, yard and a half. Um, splitting the inside leg of the reed side guard. That makes sense. Does that answer your question? Okay. Sir? Um haven't and I tell you I tell you one of the things that this thing does it kind of balances it kind of balances people up sometimes it's a little bit easier to see you know just like it we'll get to the we'll get to the three back let me see is this that no, we're still okay um, again I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit here but uh, 48 how much time do I got 10 okay good um, all right so if we all right so we got to know who the die back is we got two backs back here. This would be a near set for us. Okay? So we got two backs back here. So if we were to just call 31, he would be the die back. He would back up and be the pitch back. If we were to call 30, he would be the die back. He would come around and be the pitch back. He would cruise post snap. Because we've tagged it with an F, that tells everybody in the backfield this is the die back. Now this is the pitch back. That's, that's, all, that's all it is. That's, that's, that's all it is here, okay? This is cover, this is like what we call cover four quarters, and people do two different things. They either fill the, the safety inside of the quarterback key or pitch key, okay, or they run him and make him the pitch guy, and he's a quarterback player. So he's, he's kind of got to utilize the underneath center arc principles as far as being slow to read that, Okay. All right, here's three backs. So now, now we've got three backs in the backfield. This would be our 30 personnel, no tight ends. And now you've got to have a back who becomes your cruiser. Okay, you've got to have a back who becomes your cruiser. And these guys should be interchangeable parts. Okay, and so this is another way to disguise who the cruiser is. Okay, so it makes it a little bit more difficult as far as the defense is concerned. Because really, we've got a two-way go here, right? We can go either way, and either one of those guys can be the cruiser. Um, we could bring him post snap across the ball. We could cruise with him to the read side. So there's all kinds of different possibilities um, as far as eyes of the defense are concerned and presentation as far as the offense is concerned. All right, this is what we call 4-3 hip cover four. So by rule, by rule, by count, one, two, identify him as the mic, read side tackles, blocks the mic. He should really cruise he should really cruise to this deep safety right here, okay? He should really cruise to the deep safety, so he's screwing this thing up, okay? He should not be helping that tackle right here. He helps the tackle right here because he doesn't think the tackle has him, and maybe that's a good decision, maybe it isn't. But by rule, tackle should be on the mic, and this is the leverage part of it that I was talking about. That tackle's got to understand where that ball's going to hit, so his head's going to be on the other side, and you should get that cruiser all the way up to that safety right there and then if you look at it that way you're accounting for everybody because you're reading that dude right here and you got to make him wrong by attacking the perimeter okay you've seen all kinds of different shades you can see the two inside guys here one technique so we'll see two ones two twos two threes We'll see twos become threes, ones become threes, and ones, I mean, it's, you know, we see a lot of different things there as far as the inside is concerned. But the double combos really should, you know, take care of that. Okay, just a different blocking scheme. Um, Navy just talked about this as far as the changing it up on the perimeter, okay? Instead of coming out here and optioning two, we'll block two, and really just pitch off a of leverage is what we're doing. If we're having a hard time we're having a hard time because this guy is stringing it out, stringing it out. The quarterback's trying to get to his pitch key, and everybody's running. Everybody's running. Everybody's running. We'll try to just form the wall with this wide out right here and really just pitch off a of leverage is what it is. Okay? Again, 4-2 box, eight-man front by rule. Cruiser, 
cruiser right here first and then go block the safety. You know, he determines that the backer's a, more of a box backer than a scrape backer. You could argue that he should cut that backer right there and turn the free loose. Either way, we get the ball outside. Now they got a decision to make, right? They got a decision to make with this guy. Is he going to cover the crack and go, or is he going to crack replace? Okay, cover the crack and go, or is he going to crack replace? Absolutely. It's all inside zone principles right there. So he is pushing his aiming point is the, is the butt of the center right there. Okay, and he's reading the first play side technique right there as far as the inside zone, just like old school inside zone. It doesn't matter. Just like old school inside zone. Okay, if as he's pushing play side, the backside technique crosses his face and force him to stick his foot in the ground and get to the backside A gap or the read side A gap, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay, but again, he's got to be disciplined in this situation to push front side to make sure that he entices this guy to close and take him so the quarterback can get out to the perimeter. If he were to work straight ahead right here, or certainly if he were to fade to the dive key, it's going to muddy this thing, and this guy can come off and, and actually make a play out there. All right, this, if you look at this right here, there's a number of different change-ups right here. We're taking the cruiser and we're false keying, okay? He's false keying. Against this particular defense, because it's man, it really doesn't have the same, it does have, I guess it has an effect, but the reason I put this clip on here is to show you that here is, a, here is an example of a trap corner or a crash corner becoming your pitch key. Okay, he becomes your pitch key right here. So he could be a quarterback player, he could be a pitch player. We just got to come out and attack the perimeter as we normally do. But it's a good job of the quarterback disengaging off the mesh, knowing that he's got edge pressure, although late edge pressure from that corner. You'd like to see the pitch back just a little bit flatter, a little bit flatter. You know, that, that, that uh, crash corner is making it a little bit difficult because he's kind of between both of them. But it's a pretty good job, pretty good example of the pitch back staying wide, getting outside the pitch key, and the quarterback attacking that, uh, that trap corner. Okay, watch this. Ball's out. Didn't count. Slowed down, got lazy. We all got him. All right. 20 personnel, no cruiser. Who's the cruiser? Not, these guys can't be the cruisers. You stay two back, so one of them's got to be dive, one of them's got to be pitch. So now our H back becomes, in effect, the cruiser by calling crack. Okay? So here's one, here's two, got to count for him somehow, and there's the H back coming in. So we're just running triple. Doesn't change anything for the backfield, doesn't change anything for these guys in here. They're all working to the same combos. We actually double crack this right here and dangle the corner to try to make him make the play. Uh, he doesn't do that. He will not make that call. Okay, he will not make that call. I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this right here because I know I'm running out of time. Two more? A few more, okay, thank you. Okay, so, okay, triple, Okay, hopefully you got it. But, but what's amazing, we probably run more inside zone than we do triple. Okay, predetermined, predetermined, predetermined. But it's all about triple presentation. Okay, it's all about, so this is actually a predetermined give right here. So this is that same unbalanced shift motion that you've seen us run before. Okay, so where's everybody's eyes? Where are the adjustment? Where are they going post snap? Okay because they think we're running triple, and all of a sudden we're just running inside zone. So you have to run, you know, if you're running triple, you have to have times where that quarterback can just take a deep breath and hand the ball off, okay? And that's what inside zone does for us, okay? So off the ball tight end becomes the peel blocker. He becomes the peel blocker, okay? So if he sees any color outside that tackle right there, he's got to clean that up. Nothing, nothing, nothing changes for our line as far as their rules and the identification of the mic. If you, can, if you can see right here, you still got that read side, even though it's not read, you still got that backside tackle, read side tackle working to the same guy he would as if we were running 30. 
And although he falls down, the center is really working his combo to the fold player. We're counting on this guy scraping because of the triple presentation. Okay? So again, I'm showing you this because it's the same thing. I'm showing you this here because it looks like triple. They're defending it like triple, but we're just handing the ball off. Okay? <clears throat> Which also allows the line to come off with a little bit more um, sense of purpose. Okay? Knowing that the ball is definitely being hit inside the tackles. Pretty good job of the back pushing it front side, taking it front side out of the pistol. F would be, I'm not even going to go here, because F would be just handing the ball off. Okay, peel. Okay, this will probably be the last one I have time for, but peel. Peel looks like triple, right? Look at, the, look, at, look at the tight end. See, the tight end's arcing, right? Tight end's arcing, tight end's arcing. Look how many people are affected by the arc. So many people key the cruiser, right? And you should key the cruiser. You should key the cruiser against us. Okay, but when that happens, you get guys, eyes in the wrong spot, running <coughs> to the wrong place, and now instead of the tight end being the peel blocker on inside zone, the backside back becomes the peel blocker. Okay, therefore the tag 2021 peel uh, designates the back as the peel blocker. I think the back does an excellent job here. I think the peel blocker three does an excellent job here, just like you saw earlier on the triple. If he determines that the five is wide or up the field and the threat is the inside backer, okay, let's go ahead and block the most dangerous threat, knowing that this guy is probably not going to make the play if, in fact, we push it front side, and that's exactly what happens right there. Okay, arc, pull some guys out. Pretty good peel block by the back. Everything looks like triple. Everything looks like triple right now. Okay, good job of the back pushing it front side. Okay, good job of, of working the combos too, watch. Okay, well, actually this, is, actually this is not as good because, but we get what we want out of this Mike Backer right here. He ends up fading to the read side, so he kind of takes himself out if the back will push it. And this is what we were having a hard time with two years ago. We weren't hitting it front side enough. We weren't keeping people honest. So they were able to fade to the read side and make too many plays on the give. This is, this is maybe the cleanest shot on the video, okay, as far as this concept is concerned. One, look at the reaction, okay, and this is all about window dressing. It's all about eyes in the wrong place. We're just running inside zone is all we're doing, okay? But I want you to watch Watch the combos here, okay? You count on this guy with the outside, with this release and this back foot, you count on him scraping, especially if you've got a squeeze and scrape team, you count on him scraping, which means that we can push everything a man over, okay? And you can see the, le the right guard working to the mic. You can see the left, left guard working to the fold player. Pretty good job of the peel blocker, not great. Okay, but he should get his head inside, but at least he's there. Pretty good job of the back waiting until the quarterback catches the ball, allowing things to develop, and off he goes. So again, just inside zone. Okay, now, three back, or excuse me, two back, three wides, same play. Instead of having an arc blocker now, he becomes eye candy back here. He becomes the... Um, the, the thing that gets their eyes in the wrong place and maybe going to the wrong place, nothing changes in the backfield. We're still just running peel. Okay, so we went from a two-back set, three wide, to a three-back set, and now <clears throat> they got a little bit of misdirection right here, a little bit of eye candy with that H-back uh, right there. Last one. Last one, are we good? Okay. All right, I'll, all right, this is the last one right here. Same thing. Now we're in stationary three back. Okay, so this is our 30 set right here. And again, I think a good decision by the peel back blocker. If this was our cruiser, if this was our cruiser and we were running triple, if we were running 31, he'd do the exact same thing. He'd do the exact same thing. He'd read that as a give read 
and he'd insert through the B gap, and that allows you to pick up an extra blocker. Not always, but that's the base way we start. Not always, but that's the base way we start. There's ways to mix things up outside releasing the tackle, inserting somebody else to block that inside backer. Sometimes we'll read the inside backer. So it's not a 100%. You really can't have any 100%s here. I mean, you really can't have any 100% because people are too smart and they got too much video evidence. Okay, any, 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 quest, any, any other questions? Yes, sir. This is what we tell our quarterback, honest to God truth. Can he tackle the dive back? If he can, pull it. If he can't, give it. I swear to God, that's what we tell him. I swear to God, that's what we tell him. Because you can, you can, it can be paralysis by analysis and they can't make a decision. Now, are you going to talk about shoulders squeeze, shoulders turn? Yeah, you're going to educate him. But the bottom line, as I'm extending that ride and I'm ready to get, can he tackle the dive back? No, give it. I swear to God, that's what we tell him. <laughs> Let me give you my cell number. Take this down. Let me give you my cell number. Uh, probably text, right? Okay, that's probably the easiest way just so I can keep track of messages. My cell number is 505-217-6526. 505-217-6526. there's anything I can do for you, if there's any questions I can answer for you, if you want to come out and see us, spring ball last two weeks of March, first two weeks of April. Love to have you, love to have you come see us. Okay, guys, I really appreciate you being here. We ran over a little bit. Thank you very much.